Oh, hi, Mark. Welcome to the Chairquisition. <laughs> well, I had a funny story. This is where we take a game and we give it a one or pass fail score for does it launch performance, graphics, and control. <laughs> and then and then we rate it on one to four chairs based on how much we liked it. <laughs> wow, you, funny you story, actually Mark. managed to make me want Tommy Wusso. I know. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, all we could book was Greg Sestero. You know, honestly, um, I didn't ask because he would he might have shown up. Hundred percent. Anyway, anyways, we're we're, we're, throwing, we're throwing chairs at Mark of the Ninja, the remastered edition. It's by Clay Entertainment. It's done on the Shank Two engine. Uh, you can pick it up for about twenty USD. If you already own the original Mark of the Ninja, you can buy it for five bucks just to get the upgrade. So let's get on with this. Uh, so Ven, did it did it work on it? Ladies and gentlemen, I tried it on eighteen oh four LTS dot whatever it is. Uh, we got a Ryzen seventeen hundred with a nine eighty. You would expect a game of this uh, vintage. To run quite well, and well, let's just say out of the box, it launched. Uh, unlike the well, non remastered version, it does <laughs> launch into the wrong monitor and nuke all your other monitors. Hashtag old SDL. But the remastered version, not a problem. Right monitor, right resolution, and it holds a solid 60 at 1080p and UHD, except when it don't. You know, sometimes, like depending on the hour of the day or what shoes you happen to be wearing, and it'll just nosedive into the 40s, like maybe every 10 seconds. Like you can set a metronome to it. Very annoying. However, you can resolve this by changing your shoes or restarting the game, or changing the <laughs> resolution in the game. Or they added a thing in one of the latest betas to load the entire level, switching that on and off. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it will sort itself out and the game will once again become playable. You can reliably cheese it into becoming playable. Uh, it's graphics, it's dark and flashy at the same time. It's amazing. As far as the controls, uh, the new goodness is Steam Controller. Worked out of the box, no issues whatsoever. Right buttons, I was a happy, happy Vin. But I would give it a solid three chairs for makes with working, but I do have to ding it for the random and unexplained performance dip, and I'm not the only one that has been brought up in their forums. <laughs> yeah, on uh, Fedora 2864-bit with the i7-6700K GTX 1080 Ti, it definitely does launch. Yes, siri, Bob Rudy, Majigger. Um, Performance-wise, uh, I played it just at UHD because I wanted to see what the UHD remaster looks like. Uh, runs smoothly. I got 60 FPS. I guess I didn't have any random performance hits. Hashtag win tell. Um, <laughs> Yeah, gra graphics-wise, the animated cutscenes gave me some like new grounds flashbacks, and that's that's not a bad thing. Uh, I just haven't seen that style of animation in a while. It's just like, man, I remember Flash back when that was an art. Um, Control-wise, it works out of the box with the PlayStation 4 controller, although it does still give you the Xbox prompts. Uh, beyond that, I'm giving it a solid four chairs. It, run, it runs fine for the remaster. Hey, it, does, it lets me use both my monitors, too. That's a plus. <laughs> Yeah, and over here uh, on Solus with the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 5 6, uh, 1600, it starts right up, but the, the performance, when it tanks, it tanks like the Panzer VIII, uh, it's actually jarring to see because the game goes, oh yeah, look, everything is pretty smooth, and all of a sudden, oh god... <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, when you have that jarring a transition from 60 to 40, it's it's pretty bad. The graphics, they look very crisp, and you can actually see your character while you're hidden, which is an improvement on the first one, and I guess that's where the, uh, the focus of this particular remaster went into. The controls... Yes, the quick time event kills are still just as responsive as they were last time, but more on that later. Over here with the uh, 8-bit do NES Pro controller, it uh, it worked. So yeah, it gets three chairs out of me. All right, well there you go. Play it on Intel if you don't want random performance drops. Uh, what about fun? Did you have fun then playing this game? <laughs> Kind of like Hitman, this game has a little thing that I like to call a nope cascade, and that's where one little fuck up will screw you over so hard, one little mistake, it can trigger a tsunami of guards, and that's basically the same, like, two or three guard models you're going to be dealing with in this, and they will fuck your shit up, Brad, basically. The game itself is repetitive as hell, and I mean, it really sinks in somewhere around, like, the two hour of Ohio oh, Mark of the Ninja. <laughs> you're pressing X to stab respects, and... Gotta agree with you, Pedro. It, it, it's kind of annoying. Uh, really doesn't add anything to the game. It's like, why, why is this here? Why is this a thing? 
And um, you're only doing that when you're not uh, just kind of hurry up and wait because it's patience. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at patience. You got to be good at patience to play Oh High Market, the ninja. Uh, it does provide you with a bag of tricks to overcome situations that are designed exactly for the bag of tricks, which you were given. Uh, when this game first came out on Linux, it was kind of busted because the always run mechanic, you know, part of being a ninja, part of being silent. Yeah, that button was taped up down. So you're always running. And I, I think the three of us are like, why do we keep getting killed instantly? Then, oh, oh, that, uh, oh, oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. that really sucked. But um, even after that was sorted, uh, there was still a lot of like OMG new game on Linux at the time. And myself, I, I was able to overlook a lot of the shortcomings of the original Oh High Mark of the Ninja. It's like, cause, hey, we're getting games again on Linux. This is brilliant. However, in 2018, uh, we got a gang of games and a lot more incoming. So revisiting this, mm, I don't know if it was necessarily a good idea for their HD remake. You know, even with that code of HD, it's still kind of boring. It's not much to it. You know, I got right up to the two hour mark putting into it. It's like, eh. Anyway, how fucking ever. If you've been waiting, dying, just longing for a remaster of Bitch Ninja McBagatrix, and you have the original, and I stress, already have the original. Go ahead and pick this up. I mean, it's four ninety nine. You get to play it again. You could kill two hours and not necessarily hate yourself. Hmm? So, but if you're looking at the iron price, fourteen ninety nine for the whole kit, can't recommend it. Gonna have to throw one at it. Yeah, I'm I'm with Pedro. Uh, he brought up the quick time event assassinations. I don't really feel that they add anything. Origami had it right, where if you just get the right position, you just press the button. Otherwise, it's like, press, assassinate. Oh, shit, I actually got to do something. Quick time events, mm -hmm. my favorite thing in games since ever. Um, the sneaking gameplay is actually pretty good. It, you know, the game will require you to think about how you want to approach problems. Usually there's one or two, like, very clear paths, but... I don't know. I, I, I'm bad at this game. This requires some form of patience that I lack. Um, although I did find at some times it's just the, the easiest method is just to like fucking jump a lot and cheese your way to the next checkpoint. Because um, once you're able to hide yourself, there's really no consequence for getting caught other than your score, unless you care about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, it, it, it like Ben said, it is a very nice touch that you no longer run by default, which is a fairly serious design flaw in the first one. Other than that, it's just like a lot of timing puzzles, a lot of waiting for your opportunity to strike. Um, I mean, yeah, so, so there's there's hidden secrets in the levels. It does sort of reward you for exploring because I'll, I'll go through like a level that I thought was really, or a screen that I thought was really hard. And then I realized, oh wait, there was another way through that where I could just bypass this entire thing if I had explored a little bit, which is pretty neat. I don't know. Everything looks nice in UHD. So if you enjoyed the original Mark of the Ninja and you want maybe a couple new side missions and some Christopher art, it's not worth. It's not the worst five bucks you can spend. Yeah, for uh, the, in Canada, it's twenty bucks. So mm -hmm. it's a bit. It's a bit of a. It's a bit of a sharp asking price. If if it's fourteen bucks, I could I could maybe see if you uh, want to grab this on sale. Sale if it goes on sale for the, the autumn thingy that's happening right now, or maybe even the Christmas thing that happens when we don't get the new Doctor Who episode. Uh, no, so I'll give it uh, two cheers. Yeah, I I guess I suppose I shouldn't have expected much considering this was a remaster rather than a remake, but I still hate those fucking QTE stealth kills. It's, um, no, and it, it's annoying. It really is annoying how the moment you're spotted, your protagonist ninja person forgets that he has a sword. It's like, nope, we're not using the sword until the enemy is knocked down. Also, and I mentioned this last time when we threw chairs at the non-remastered version of the game, uh, the you get rewarded for not raising the alarm or killing any guards. Uh, and the only thing you get for those rewards is a higher score in the level and some more currency for you to buy upgrades for your character. Why you would want to buy upgrades for your character if you're already good enough to beat the level without triggering the alarm or alerting any of the guards or having to kill them? Yeah, no, there's something was a little bit lost there. But Clay, the developers of the game, they actually do 
a really good job when it comes to some games. Shank was fucking awesome. Shank 2 was more of the aforementioned fucking awesomeness. Uh, don't starve if you're into that particular genre. It's actually bloody amazing. So, of all the games that they have, why would they remaster this one? Mm, one chair. All right, well, that's it for our chair acquisition of Ho oh, High Mark of the Ninja. Got any final thoughts? I'm upside down now. Woo. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> upside down, Jordan. It's other Jordan from the other realm. Yes. Um, <laughs> well, we'll like come back to Linux Gamecast Stranger Things edition. <laughs> it's got a really... <laughs> one, one of the things I will say is you bring, you bring up a good point with... Um, there are multiple ways through each level, though, which once that really sunk in, I'm like, wait a minute... There's a way through every one of these situations that I don't have to kill anyone or get detected, which I'm just like, well, fuck, what's the point here? I just got to sit here and brain this out, wait it out. And that's not much of a game for me when I know that I don't really have to cheese it. I just got to wait it and I'm done. Peace out. Um. That's the thing. If it if if it was just the waiting, it would be fine. Uh, that's how uh, I agree with thief... you on the ninja sword too. I'm like, come on, uh, uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, oh, I got spotted. Why can't I use my sword? How long did you wait to try to kill a dog? He's like, this game's not gonna let me to kill a dog. Yeah, I can kill a dog. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I, beat, I beat the crap out of one of those German shepherds. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I understand why they take your sword away when you get caught because they want to disincentivize that. Because otherwise, you can just origami murder bush your way through everything. Um, and if you want, if you want to do the murder bus strats, you got to actually unlock some of the aforementioned uh, upgrades in order to do that. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Like there, 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 there's there's a game design reason for doing what they did. I don't know if that was necessarily the correct choice, but mm. it's a stealth game, right? They don't want they want you to be sneaky. They don't want you to gun your way through. That's what Shank is, as opposed to Mark of the Ninja, right? Got to differentiate it but, somehow. It, yeah, but that's the thing. Okay, you can. Uh emphasize that stealthiness but don't be obtuse about it if the situation calls for it let it let me get through it organically and organically means i'm playing a fucking ninja with a fucking sword and i can't fucking use it at the end of the day before we bounce out of here uh we wanted uh shinobi 2d shinobi we didn't want um 2D to shitty i don't know where to go with it oh, uh, I, I, I actually if you if you want that um Completely unrelated. Uh, you get you got to find a copy of it through means, but uh, the PlayStation Two Shinobi, very good.